On a breakfast today, the People's Democratic Party begins primary elections to nominate candidates for the 2023 general elections in the various states. We'll take a look at the conduct of those primaries. Also on the breakfast, we'll be speaking with an expert too on how to end obstetrics fistula. And also don't forget, we'll also look at the headlines of the front pages of today's national dailies, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. A very good morning to you. Welcome to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And what is a beautiful Monday morning reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. I'm Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bopos. Beautiful Monday morning. And it feels really great to be back on your screen. Uh, not a great one for Liverpool fans. <laughs> <laughs> and you decided to come to work wearing red. Mercy. You know. Where is your shame? Where is your red. shame? <laughs> no, it's not a shame. Where I mean, you, 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 you can say that now, Kofi. Anyway, but, but it's okay. I mean, as a, as a football fan who has a soft side for Arsenal, uh, I just want to talk about uh, the Premier League. I I'm, I'm, I'm moved on, really. <laughs> moved on, moved on. But anyway, um, that's a good way to start a look at the trending stories within the country and around the world. Um, a lot of social media buzz and attention being taken uh, uh, generated by why the, do I feel like you're very happy the fine I'm not I'm not too happy about that but I'm happy in life general all the time no I know I have, you're happy in life but I'm just Prozac inside of me no no but I'm just saying that you you feel like you're just happy about you know the outcome of the game well I mean I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Vasna football club and they didn't make the top four why should I be happy not happy at all but I mean um, we have to move on but but the the, 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 the bars generated by the the final day uh, day's play in the Premier League uh, took over social media. It was quite interesting. Almost, uh, it was reminiscent of, of the Manchester City uh, first league victory. Remember that famous victory where it was Manchester City versus Manchester United and Aguero uh, had to score that last minute goal against Queen's Park Rangers to leave the title. It was two games. And that's how it was. I, I was surprised because I was, I kept my eyes on the Arsenal game. I just didn't want to watch any other game. But I was surprised to come uh, into the second half and see that Manchester City were down by two goals to nail. It, it, was, it was a big surprise, mercy for me to see that. And I mean, I never expected it. So it was, it was a nail-biting finish to the game. If Manchester City had drawn, Liverpool had won, Liverpool would have walked away with the title. If Manchester City had lost, Liverpool had won, Liverpool would have walked away with the title. The last 80, you know, it was the last ditch goal by Ilkay Gondogan to seal the victory for Manchester City. The, they've won the title now for the fourth time in five years, uh, basically colonizing the Premier League. I'm not too happy about that as well, but that's what, what transpired. <laughs> well last ditch goal. I mean, look at the Manchester City or the Aston Villa goals came uh, in the 37th minute was 1-0. Then in the 69th minute, it was 2-0. Philip Coutinho scored the second goal. You're a former player. And uh, Gonogan had to come onto the field of play in the second half and was able to get one goal back, 76th minute. Rodri scored a goal to make it 2-2. And we all thought, okay, can these guys really score three goals? I mean, it's amazing. We must give it to them. No, you, you, you must give it to them. And the fact that, uh, you know, they've actually always been there. And one would think that... I, I know that a lot of persons were rooting for Liverpool. You had a lot of support um, and all of that. But it does also take out the fact that you have Liverpool winning their match, uh, you know, in a grand style. But it, it was also dependent on the fact that if Manchester City would loss, then it would be a plus for them. But that didn't really happen because of the comeback that they actually had. And it's a great one. Mm. Uh, but you can also take the fact that uh, Manchester City is a, is a great team and Pep Guardiola has been doing a great work, you know, with the boys. Fantastic comeback. And that's exactly what happened, just like you have mentioned. Uh, no one saw that coming, but it happened. And that's the beauty of football. Really saddening, especially for Liverpool fans and Liverpool themselves. Even though um, you also want to give it, I mean, at some point you have the coach saying, 
that at the first season, you know, during the first season and first session or first half of the season, uh, you, you can't really say that Liverpool were really consistent in terms of the play. So the inconsistency actually led to that. It was just one point, just one point, one, one point, point away. You know, uh, one you point, know, can, you one know, vote, one vote you, can change. You know, what it's like say, one vote, one point, yes. one anything can make the difference. You know what they say in football is, is you have your fate in your hands. <laughs> You know, you know, you have your fate in your hands. So Manchester City, they had their fate no, in their hands. They knew what they had to do. You know, um, and then football is sometimes it's not good. If all the time it's not good to rely on another team helping you beat your opponent to be able to make it to the next round or to win or the quarter. I see. For instance, Arsenal were relying on on Norwich City to beat Tottenham, which was, I mean, almost impossible for them to make that top four when they could have won against Newcastle and then also maybe held Tottenham to a, a draw, you know, to, to just because they had it in their hands. They bottled it. Liverpool, too, there was a match they drew, uh, I think it was against Tottenham, that really affected them, you sure. know. So when you place your fate in another person's hand, then, then of course, this is what you have. Um, it was surprising, really surprising to see that Man City were down 2 nil at home. I don't know what happened. Maybe, maybe I've been thinking about it. How how can such a great team be two nailed down to Aston Villa? But maybe, maybe sometimes the, the occasion gets to you, the the tension of the day because Man City are good, you know. But they they prove themselves resilient. This is the second time they're coming down from behind to to win, you know. So it's great. But um, one of the 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 side stories to this victory was the fact that the the Manchester City fans poured onto the the pitch you know, at the final whistle to, to celebrate with their team. And you saw fans, in fact, the stewards had to, you know, literally drag the players away. Some players wanted to celebrate with the fans because they were happy. And like, you see the likes of John Stones, you know, reluctant to leave the field, but the stewards had to drag them uh, away so that they could be safe. But um, uh, Manchester City have had to apologize to Robin Olsen, the, um, the second goalkeeper, the goalkeeper on the day uh, for... Aston Villa, after Steven Gerrard, the coach of uh, Aston Villa, claimed that his goalkeeper was attacked during a pitch in that pitch invasion at the Etihad Stadium. And the videos are already on social media uh, where it shows that um, uh, Olsen, the goalkeeper, appeared to be holding his head as he emerged from the crowd. You know, and these are some of the dangers we've seen in fans embarking on pitch invasions. You know, when, 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 uh, Everton were able to win their last game against Crystal Palace, the previous game, and, 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 and achieve safety in the Premier League. The fans also went onto the pitch. These are the things we've seen uh, about the Premier League mm. um, that need to be worked on. But apart from Manchester City winning the league, it wouldn't be fair if we talk about you know, Man City winning the league and Arsenal not making it into the top four. And do not talk about the teams that escaped relegation. It was also guilt edge, you know. Um, it was dependent on that day. The final relegation slot was decided on that day. And I predicted, I predicted on radio uh, last week that um, I think Leeds will stay up and uh, Burnley will go down. You know, those, that was the last slot to determine who was going to go down. And uh, thankfully, my prediction came true as uh, Leeds United were able to, to beat Brentford away which was a, a wonderful feat, and they stayed up while Burnley lost to Newcastle, and, of course, they have gone down, you know. Well, well we can team. also say that, you know, um, uh, Liverpool actually put out a fantastic play right there over the Wolves, and the fact that, like you have rightly mentioned, when you put your faith in another man's hand, you can actually uh, mm -hmm. decide what would actually happen. Yes, so it, yes. it was a situation. 3-1 was the game. Fantastic play right out there. I also remember looking at, you know, a picture at the time where you had Mo Salah putting out the goal and then he was, I'm sure he was he was very, uh, I mean, looking at that goal and the expression, it could have been that he uh, was taking it them anywhere. But it's then, it, you know, you could see, there was also mm -hmm. a picture of a fan mm -hmm. trying to let him know that, hey, guy, Oh. Man City is ahead yes, of you. Yes, you know, the goals are like this and, and that's it. But it's okay. One of the things that you have Jürgen Klopp saying is that uh, uh, I, I think that they weren't really consistent at the time when the season started. And so if they put your, your thoughts together and put your acts together, they might just come better. Mm. But it was a fantastic one. And congratulations to Man City winning the Premier League and to all of the fans there. Indeed.
All right, so we move away from that. Another one is the fact that you have a, a building collapsing in Lagos Island. Again, it seemed to be um, a very consistent act that's been going on for a very long time. If you look at statistics and reports, the reports that between 20, 2000 or 2005, open to 2000 and uh, 2020, if you like to say, we've had like 152 building collapse in Lagos and it calls for a lot of concern. So one would think that with the ECOE, because with that collapse, uh, it, it was like it was the climax of it. It was the epic of it. It was just everything. And we would learn our lessons and we'll get to action. It's, it's a combination of government and the people. When you talk about the people at this point, talk about the developers and those who own these properties and the fact that we need to do the right thing. But doing the right thing, we can never overemphasize that we need to do the right thing at all times. I don't even think that we, we need to get to a point where we have government pushing and asking that we need to do the right thing as a people. Mm. Yes. So imagine that you're a developer and then uh, you're being contracted by the owners of the properties and then you... You don't even have to dive it because according to reports that we have and the reports which is actually authentic it's been verified by the authorities is that this set building was a bungalow and then it was being converted to a story building how do you explain all of that these are the reasons over time statistics and reports have have actually stipulated that the reason why you have all of this collapse is because there's always you know some conversion we want to cut corners you have an original plan, then you want to divert from the original plan and get to another. So it's a lot for us. But we don't really get to think about it. But who should take the blame? Should, should it be all about the blame? It's, it's quite unfortunate that every other time, I mean, 2021, 2022, prior to this time, we still talk about building collapse in Lagos, and it feels like there's nothing that happens. And in all of this, we get to loss. I mean, we're talking about the loss of lives, okay? Let's, yes, leave it, let's leave the properties. People die in the course of this. Whether it's one, two, three, four, five, people are dying. And for a mistake that could have been corrected. In, in, indeed. Mercy, it's, uh, it's sad. You know, um, uh, yesterday we heard that three more bodies were recovered uh, from the rubbles of that three-story building, uh, which collapsed. Uh, under construction. This is another building under construction. I think the last major one, I mean, they're all major, but the last uh, two, um, the one in Koyo, was also under construction. So yesterday, three more bodies were recovered from the rubbles of that three-story building under construction, um, which collapsed at uh, Freeman Road. Freeman Road for Alayaki Lane in Lagos Island. Um, this should be the second amongst the past three that have has happened in Lagos Island. So that recovery of uh, the three more bodies uh, brings the total number of deaths to four. Um, four people have died in this latest building collapse in Lagos, this time in Lagos Island. Uh, five people, we're told, have been rescued alive. According to the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, they're saying that the building was in violation of safety protocol. And, and this is something that we must note, we must take note of. The building was in violation of safety protocol. The, the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency also is saying that they discovered that the building had been captured by the Lagos State Building Control Agency. It's uh, the agency that looks at buildings and approves and controls and sees which is perfect and fit to continue. So they said this building control agency, um, the district office of the building control agency uh, had captured this building and that they had served the developer with all the statutory notices. They had also sealed these statutory notices at the district and central enforcement level. So they have district offices for the state building control agency. And then at the central level or the central office, they had done that. Now, there were investigations conducted, which also went on to reveal that the developer had continued, uh, you know, despite these um, uh, uh, notices to clandestinely um, work on the building. And we're told that he was working mostly at night and on weekends. So, of course, at night, you don't expect that the authorities will, be coming, will come looking for you. They'll be at home resting. You know, and on weekends as well. This is what we're told. You know, so 
it, it, it's, it's sad, you know, we blame authorities a lot of times, but this is a clear case of the authorities actually serving notices to a developer. Do not work. No, so, so, and, in and the, so it, yes, yes. So in, the, in this particular case, I mean, no one is, um, it's a situation because usually, like I mentioned earlier on, it's a combination of the people and a combination of government. And we always say that we can be in government uh, at all times, you know, for everything that's going on, because uh, you also have, we also have a responsibility to, a role to play. So for instance, if you follow, I mean, if we have, if there are statistics and reports saying that 152 or thereabout had collapsed at a certain time, uh, you know, between 2005 to uh, 2020, then we should pay attention to it. We're talking about those who are, uh, saddled with the responsibility of these contractors without even having the government going about monitoring and uh, looking out for uh, ensuring that you're living up to expectation and you're doing the need for what we're saying you should have you should consider the fact that this would have an implication the implication would be that people would die if you don't do the right thing that's what we're saying and th this has been going on so it, it's not about you know putting the blame on the people like i stated earlier on it's a combination of the people and the government you can't take that away it's okay that you have disaster risk management reduction and then you have government setting up government has set up agencies you have this borders check-in and most of the times, a lot of people would say that government, uh, those, those, these agencies that have been set up have looked away. They've turned their eyes and for whatever reason, taken bribe or whatever, what, what, whatever you, you want to explain. But the point is, uh, if you have um, at the point where a building has been flagged, so because I know that sometimes you move around and then you see like an asterisk red on a particular structure. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. If it's being flagged, why don't you follow it to the latter? Yes. But this is where we, you know, we bring the conversation to an end. We're saying that we need to do the right thing. We can't continue like this and expect a different result. Buildings will continue to collapse in Nigeria if we do not wake up and do the needful. All right, um, that's a trending segment right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. When we return, we dive straight into the pages of the National Dailies. We have analysis of today's newspaper headlines. Still watching The Breakfast.